Hi, this is Jason West. This is Steve Fukuda. This is Vince Zampella. I'm Mackie McCandlish. And this is Zia Dreki. So, Steve, <laughs> talk about what this used to be. The this used to be a very talkative sequence. The AI is saying things like, where are we going, sir? El what, sir? El what, sir? And oh. it's just silly. Very and so lame. one day... For the longest time, we had Steve's voice in there, too. Just yeah, the it was dialogue. quite annoying. And so I just said, okay, I don't want to hear this anymore. And I, we would tempt it. For a moment, we tempt it with little James Brown. And it was like, <laughs> it Pulp, Fiction. More it was like Pulp Fiction. It was kind of funny. And then I got serious. And then we replaced it with some other music that was more appropriate. And then it really gave the whole thing its sort of serious sense that makes right. it actually feel cool. And then we started showing the game to to press and we couldn't use any kind of tempt in music so Steve actually composed some stuff over the weekend we put that in. This part used to start with the whole situation with just guys standing there, there was no fighting going on and it wasn't very Call of Duty and you go up and talk to your commanding officer and then all of a sudden he gets sniped and everybody runs for cover and you the building randomly blows up die. Somehow. Yeah and the building wouldn't blow up until you actually looked at it. Which there, there was a tank a that cheesy. would drive up and destroy the building. So. Yeah, so we made the, the building yeah. blow up back on the right end when yeah. you could actually see it. Now, that spot right there where they just crossed, uh, a lot of uh, testers get hung up kind of standing there shooting at the MG42. So we've done a lot of work to kind of usher people to the right, flank to the right, go to the right. Yeah, there's an animation on McGregor. He's telling you to go, and all these friendlies run around here. Yeah, we've got four friendlies that swing around to the right to give you a hint. Oh, nice grenade. And these guys were, these Germans here, I mean, they're part of the late edition revamp of the level to... Uh, make it more interesting. <laughs> it's always neat to see players actually often are very inclined to follow their friendlies. Whereas as a game developer, I'm usually just trying to break things. The way the, way the player played that section was pretty perfect. <laughs> just grenade spam and, and don't... Typically you don't want to let the Germans get a foothold because once they're entrenched, they're much more difficult. So if you can get them on the way to their cover, that's the, the best time to get them. Yeah, I've been a little slow and had a, uh, a real hard time in that section. Yeah, you've got to be careful because the AI will throw back grenades. That's why sometimes you'll see uh, an explosion in midair, and that's usually from an AI who's thrown it back. On the higher difficulty levels, the AI are much more likely to throw grenades, whereas on the lower ones, they're basically not allowed to. And if you play on veteran, the AI can throw as many grenades as they want, and that's very, very dangerous. We used to have that uh, rooftop lined with enemies that would also be raining fire down on you, but we removed it because it was a little too hard. It was also confusing to players, usually. Yeah, because they wanted to hang out and fight instead of swing around. So that guy's at the doorway to hint to you to go in there. And this is like a super interior decorated room by one of our environmental artists. This is one of the more linear levels. It started as a completely non-linear level where you go from hard point to hard point in whatever order you wanted with all sorts of objectives on the compass. But it uh, was too tight and didn't have any direction or moments. It was basically only fun if you took certain paths, so we decided to make sure that you took those paths. This level probably got redone the most. Yeah, I think all told uh, it was about eight months spent on this level. Something like that. Not counting environmental artist time. It was always one of the prettier levels though. Yeah. Even from the very, very beginning. And now this is uh, going to be the demo level, so you'll probably see a lot of it. And those airplanes flying overhead were always there from the very yep. beginning. <laughs> that was something we added. Right here, there used to be like one lone flat gun out there. This is like <laughs> the Burnville <laughs> times three part, where it's a, to some degree an homage to the first game, but it's like the first game 10x. Yeah, we really came in and tried to 10x this level. It was our first playable? Yeah. Yeah. So this was sort of the, the blueprint that we'd use for future development for the rest of the levels. Right. There was a certain degree of false starts on Call of Duty 2, and it's something that we go through on every game where we take stock of where we are and then reshuffle the deck and start over to some degree and uh, figure out exactly what we need to do to make the game good. Well, start over is kind of a strong, strong <laughs> word, but... Whatever you yeah. experiment, there's going to be, you know, something, not everything can be a success, so then you you distill it down to its best attributes. You should definitely shoot the red barrels when you're coming through here. That's just 
cool. Even the first <laughs> shot set, sets them on fire, and then second and third shots make them blow up. I missed red barrels on Call of Duty 1, so. <laughs> no shortage of crates and barrels. Any proper game. Yeah, so I think our process uh, is very iterative, and the more we uh, are allowed to kind of change the game, the more time we have to do that, the, the better it becomes. The gameplay really gets tight. The moments really come together. Like right. the, the planes you see flying overhead. I mean, that was in that was like an experiment people started doing right after Call of Duty 1 ended, where they said, hey, maybe we'll do some flight paths with animations in Maya instead of using uh, splines. It's pretty cool, it adds to the ambience. And all those AI we just saw were doing our new traverse where they uh, jump over objects, but they do it so their hand lines up right with the uh, surface they're jumping over. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I believe that's actually one of those where it's randomly not the same yeah, animation Yeah, it'll pick different time, animations. Which really adds a lot. Binoculars. Cinematic intensity, right? <laughs> I love the binoculars. Yeah, the AI yeah. will run around and they'll set up MG42s based on where the player is. You want to generally try to stop them before they actually get them set up. I thought to make binoculars standard issue in Call of Duty 2, so if you like them, write a letter. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a lot of opportunities to flank around and come at them from the side. Yeah, and you don't have to go around this way, you can go the other way too. Yeah, you can throw grenades up there too, it's a good idea. Adding the uh, sandbags and flags really made this feel like an important place, this particular building. I remember the day that we did that. Yeah, that was one of the things during the uh, the reshuffling of the deck, as Mackie put it, where we are just like, there's not enough swastikas and flags on this game. We also Definitely. wanted to make this a more significant objective where you feel like you're accomplishing something, so we made it be all about blowing up the boats in the harbor after you take out the flax so that your boats in the distance, which you may or may not have noticed are there, can continue unharmed. And uh, this one doesn't come across quite as clearly as some of the other objectives. It's invariably, that invariably mistaken for a aircraft bombing run. Yeah, I'm sure we'll... Invariably. See, they're marking with the orange smoke now that you've destroyed the flax and now... But people like explosions. Yeah, make sure you look to the right here. <laughs> it's very different See the boats. ships in the distance? Those are our, those are your boats. Really, Some they flashes. are. flashes. Where's the binoculars? <laughs> and there's the really plane nobody to add to the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> People always think planes are bombing. Yeah. Artillery is a concept, doesn't pick up. As long as they feel like they accomplished something. The player was using a Thompson, which they actually did use in, in the British Army. A useful uh, tip is to uh, always run over your dead friendlies and pick up more Thompson ammo, <laughs> because the Germans aren't going to drop any for you. <laughs> or you can get a bar. The bar's pretty cool, too. Bren. Oh, yeah, the Bren. Those little foot puffs were a Swifty. Yeah, we added those for uh, level-specific foot puffs. Oh. And there's the famous door moment. Yeah, so that was Went sort through of, much iteration. Yeah. <laughs> that was a spontaneous thing, sort of, during a, a level review. Well, it so felt I, like you always have these guys kicking doors open for you, so, you know, a player's going to get used to seeing them kick the door. What if we just have the guy actually get killed, and it gives you something you're not expecting at all and surprises the player? That always got uh, lots of oohs and ahs at E3. I mean, we're not really so much about the gratuitous destruction of your friendlies, but if it's to make the moment come to life. Just another good opportunity to see some swastikas. I also felt like this was one of the best imagery it's moments in the game. Office. Yeah, that uh, the hole in the wall provides a great frame to kind of let the background stand out. It's like the 180, Hogan's Alley. We're not going to actually see that on this playthrough, but this is, it looks this great, is, This me. is a scam to, to anti-binocular propaganda. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't like binoculars, make sure you send that letter, too. I don't know if a lot of... Oh, oh that was nice. 
Yeah, we got Ragdoll going on there, right? <laughs> yeah, this visual represents a lot of different departments coming together really well. And a lot of the way, you know, the effects team and the art team and the level design team and the code team work really well together to really got everything going on in the scene. One thing I like to do when I get to this part is throw just lots of smoke into that area and just run through there in the smoke and the friendlies will jump after me and start cleaning up some of these Germans. There's a lot of opportunities to use smoke in this level. Nice. <laughs> This is also uh, in North Africa, which is one of the new campaigns in, uh, in Call of Duty 2. New setting, you know, it's vastly different from uh, any of the other settings, so. Throwing the grenade around the blind corners, always a good practice. Yeah, often it's good to throw more than one since that one didn't work. You can always, sometimes the AI off, you know, will run away. Hey, you're always going to get more, so just Yeah, that's a valid joke room, on it. room cleaning technique is, you know, throwing the grenades, then pick up their grenades and keep going. It might not be uh, completely obvious, but the pistols are actually really useful weapons, and they let you run faster in this game when you're using a pistol. So what you can do is you can get close to a German that's using an automatic weapon, and after he empties his clip, rather than uh, try to reload right in front of you, he'll throw his gun down and pull out a pistol. So you wait till he does that and then kill him, and then you can get, a, get his pistol. Ah, uh, so 1997. <laughs> Make sure you can't. <laughs> Miss those documents. <laughs> yeah. Make them glow. Let's go, let's go. Players appreciate the glow. We do a lot of testing, and anytime yeah. anybody, anything's not glowing, they, people tend to miss it. We used to have the end music kick in right about here, but uh, sometimes players would uh, like to hang out here and just sort of messed up the flow of the music, so we moved it a little later. Hmm. Hmm, interesting playthrough. <laughs> Let's explore the block with the freaking cart. This used to be the hardest spot in the game. There were enemies up here on the left at that window shooting at you, and it took me 20 tries to get through it. Yeah, we, we argued a lot about whether or not we wanted to lose that building fight. It was tough. I mean, this is really a very tight area, though, so there's only so much you can do. Yeah, it was better just to, to end the level in a good spot. It's one of those hard edits. And a lot of the uh, the detail stuff that you see came from, uh, we sent our artists over to North Africa to take texture reference and stock of, of what was over there. Oh, here comes Price's face. And watch, they're carrying the Smile line. at the champagne bottle, that's pretty cool. Watch the smile, watch the smile. Oh. Yep, there it is. <laughs> 